Christmas is nine days away. Nine. And we celebrate the birth of our Savior and the King of Kings. We honor Him with our bowed heads, our prayers, and the reading of His Word. We sing songs of glory and honor to Him because it is our joy to do so. Joy. Now that's a word that makes sense to me. I believe that we all can say that sometime in our life, joy has entered in and we liked it. You see, joy is that special feeling of happiness and one that comes through many different things. You might receive joy when someone does something for you. Or when your child does well on his or her, own, her schoolwork. Joy can land in your lap when you receive a raise at work or you get to buy that new car. It could be yours when you see a great movie, hear the lyrics of the song, or watch a smile on your aging parent's face as they see their grandkids play. The feeling of happiness is important in our lives. For if it never occurs, then there's trouble coming. I hope you realize that the feeling of joy is a gift from God. Amen. This is something which He invented and handed down to His creation. He knew joy would infiltrate our lives and make us smile. He knew we needed a special pick-me-up every now and then. He knew that joy would give us the giggles, which would take away some hurt or anger. You see, joy is essential in every believer's life because it regulates our emotions. It assists us when we are down and gives us a boost of energy to continue along the path. Joy is just good to experience. And because of that, I want us to look at some important times when God handed down joy from heaven and exposed it to others. Let's pray real quick. God, I smile when I see so much fun, energy, excitement singing songs to you. I rejoice in knowing that you are smiling. So Father, this joy that you invented that you gave to us. Teach us a little bit more about it. And let us walk through the rest of this Christmas season with joy in our hearts, knowing the reason for it. Thank you, Father. In the name of Christ we pray and all God's children said. Amen. So we start with our definition. Get your bulletins out and write it in. Here's the definition of joy. A feeling of great pleasure or delight. I think it's important that we, as I've done throughout Advent, started with those words and had you write them in. That way you know where we are. You know the meaning of it. You're not thinking that you might know or your meaning might be misinterpreted. But it is joy, a feeling of great pleasure or delight. Many times in Scripture, we can see God handing down joy. And in the Christmas story, we see it over and over again. So let's do some reading today, and then some explaining. Luke chapter 2, 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. The birth of Jesus. The birth of Jesus. The joy that Joseph and Mary had to have when that baby was born, was off the charts. Off the charts. Now look at many of you all. You mothers and fathers who have had children. There was joy when them rascals were born, right? Now, I will tell you, when my daughter was born, I tried to push her back in. No, I didn't. There was joy. Simple, unadulterated joy. Now multiply that because Mary and Joseph just birthed their Savior. The Savior of the world. That's hard for me to grasp, to, to think. 
joy that couldn't be matched because they knew the Savior world, the Messiah, had been born. Great pleasure and delight wrapped around them, and the baby was born in Bethlehem. Now the first part of the sermon we're going to run through, and you're going to see why. I want to get the foundational blocks for today, next Sunday, and Christmas Eve. In Bethlehem, this baby was born, fulfillment of prophecy. God's plan was in full motion, and this was part of His plan. And we need to see for what it was. You see, God told prophets hundreds of years ago that this is where the Messiah would be born. A minor prophet, Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 and 4, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Hundreds of years before, God has a minor prophet write these words, say these words, so that it's been told. So in Bethlehem, fulfillment of prophecy. Now we know that it wasn't, uh, the birth wasn't in a hospital. It wasn't a sterile place as we have had our children. Anybody here have a kid, a uh, child in a taxi cab or in a car? I'm being serious. Okay? Because that's about as close as we can get, to be honest with you. Here, it's in a stinky, dirty manger. You know, I know I pound this. I know I say it every week. I know that. And you know why? Because it took me a long time. I was 18 before I really ever heard the true story of Christ. Okay? And in that, the birth of the baby, um, I'm from a doctor's family. My father was a physician, a GP in Charleston. And with that in mind, everything he did was sterile, man. I mean, it was all sterile. Unless he would come and I would go and open up my refrigerator door just to get a glass of milk, and there would be four syringes right there. I would close the door and go hide because I knew I was getting shot. It was coming. I'm serious on that. I mean, I hid underneath the bed. I was 17. No way. But, you know, I, I understand sterile. But this was as far from it as you could get. You see, there was no room at the end. All the other rooms were taken because of the census. And the best that they could do was to sleep in the barn. A stable, a manger. Stinky and dirty. There were animals all around. It was stinky and dirty. It wasn't like, um, hey, um, janitorial service, please go to the barn and clean up for Mary and Joseph. They are coming. That's not it. It was stinky and dirty. You know, God could have done better for his son. Could have had the best doctors could have had the cleanest area, but he didn't. God's plan called for the most meager surroundings for his son, our Savior, to be born. And that's what happened. And after the birth, and they cleaned him up. Men, if you had the opportunity to go back and be involved with the birth of your child, um, and to, to see the baby born, uh, we had some difficulty with our first pregnancy, and it was a little scary there for a little bit. So they didn't allow me to go, but on the second one, my son was born. I, I saw him, saw him come out, and, and there he was, man. You know, and, and they, they don't come out clean. You know, I mean, it, it, they're dirty. They're they've got all of that on them, and so can you see Joseph just cleaning Jesus and laying him on his wife's breast, and the look. You who have babies who, who, who have had a birth, you know what I'm talking about. It, it, nothing beats it. A mom's first look at the baby she's been carrying for nine months, give me a break. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool. And that's Mary. And Joseph took him and wrapped him as best as he could in the cloth. The joy of the world was born in that stinky manger wrapped in cloth, laid to sleep in a food trough. Wrapped in cloth and laid in that food trough. Guess what? That's the best Mary and Joseph could do. You do realize it was a food trough. <coughs> Literally, just earlier that day, animals ate it. 
So take away all the stuff that you think and have been thinking that everything was so cool when Jesus came into the world. It was nasty. It was horrible. But it was God's plan. Amen? Amen. And the joy that Mary and Joseph had through the roof because they know who this child is. And they know how she was impregnated. And they know it's the Savior of the world. Is that baby your Savior? Or are you just going through Christmas season as Christmas? You see, I, I want you to give face to face with the baby. Is he your Savior? I'm not talking to your wife. I'm not talking to your husband. I'm not talking to your um, mom or dad or son or daughter. I'm talking to you. No better time in the world than to make a profession of faith and acclamation that He is your Savior than today. The joy that you will have, unspeakable. Luke 2, 8 and 12. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, the Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. You see, this is the announcement. This is the announcement of the birth. Sometimes we send out pictures announcing a birth through the mail. Sometimes we send out uh, uh, texts or emails that announce the birth of, of the baby. And this is the first time that the birth of Jesus was told and it was by an angel out on the mountainside. I don't know about you, man. I remember when my daughter was born, and I am talking about my kids today. My daughter was born, and, you know, I went right outside, and there was my father and my mother, and I'm an old jock and all this stuff, and, and I looked at my father and I said, girls can play basketball too. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. I was so full of joy. That was the announcement. We've had a baby girl. Gosh, I can remember, I can remember that like it was yesterday. Of course, that was 40 or so years ago, and so I is a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what? The announcement went to a group of guys. One in women then. Went to a group of guys. Shepherds. So what do we know about shepherds? I've been teaching them for 15 years. I think you know right on it, but let's, let's look at it. They were guardians of sheep, and that was almost the lowest occupation you could have. According to the uh, Life Application New Testament Commentary, shepherds were outcasts, not allowed in the city, and not trusted by the general public, for often they were thieves. Luke gave this story about the shepherds for a reason. Jesus would come not to the proud and powerful, but to the outcasts, the humble, those considered last on the social list. To these men, God brought the first news of his son's arrival. Think about that for a second. And might I put something to you? If Christ had not been born and in, would be born on the 25th of December this year, who would the angel go to? Might I lay at you Mark Gerald's thought process? If he's going, if he went to, uh, not the proud and powerful, but to the outcast, the humble, those considered last. If he was born today, the outcast, hmm, really not wanted in the city and not trusted by the general public. Some of them are thieves. Might the first to see him today be the homeless? Trying to put it in perspective for you all, for everyone here. What God has done with this magnificent Christmas story. It wouldn't be maybe to you. Many of you all have fantastic jobs, great jobs, and you give God glory for that. But guess what? This might have occurred, and if it did, then it might have gone to the homeless. But even in that thought process, think about being a shepherd. 
out on the hillside, all by himself or with the other guys. The angel appears to them. The glory of the Lord shone round about them. A bright light covered the sky, broke through the darkness. You see, the glory here means more than just the light. It refers to the majesty and splendor accompanying God's presence. So God sends an angel, and I believe God is there. The announcement, and all of this scared those guys half to death. I mean, would it not? Seriously, I, we talk about it a lot, but it would scare them. I mean, they're out there watching their sheep. They've been doing it their whole lives. Nothing's, nothing's different tonight. And all of a sudden, boom! An angel and a huge bright light. I loved uh, the video we started with. I think you all got a kick out of it too. But even those three, you know, uh, shepherds out there, oh, oh, you know, they're doing all that. It would have happened. They would have had to cover their eyes. They would have had to do something to block it so that they could see. How would you have reacted? Shoot fire. I don't know. Been crazy. And then he, the, what he said, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Wow. Wow. The angel spoke to the lowly outcast. I bring you good news. That's what it said. That's what he said to them. I bring you good news. God is still bringing the good news today to you. But right there, it was to them. You're the first one to hear if you're, an, if you're a shepherd. You're the ones to get to hear the announcement first. The good news that will cause great joy. Everybody say, great joy. Great joy. Say it again, great joy. Great joy. I'm telling you, not just little joy or some joy or maybe joy, but great joy. Great joy. Folks, if you have Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal Savior and Lord, then you've got great joy. Crap happens. Yeah, I said it. It happens to all of us. But inside of whatever's happening in your world and in your life, the joy of Jesus, if you have Him, if you've accepted Him, is inside of you. And it will never leave you, nor forsake you. It can't. It's part of who you are now. When I go through darkness, when stuff happens that is just unbelievable and you can't rectify it in your mind, and it takes a while to get through it, I get through it because on the other side of it, I know that there's Jesus' joy. I know that there's Jesus' joy. And He says, wow, a Savior is born, born to you. Again, to you. You hear it first, you lowly outcast. Get to know about it before the religious leaders, the power brokers, and the kings and queens. And I just think that is such a beautiful story for us. It is an assurance that guess what? We don't have to be a movie star. We don't have to be quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. You don't have to be a singer. You don't have to be a political leader. You know who you've got to be? Just you. Nobody else. There was a time in my life when I was young in, in, um, there was a time in my life when I was young in the Lord and I watched three men inside of the church I was attending. I watched how they walked. I watched how they talked. I, uh, one of them is here today and I watched what they did and I, I wanted my spiritual life to be there. But you know what God wanted? God wanted me to be me. He didn't want me to be Tom Harpole. He didn't want me to be Roy Eads. He didn't want me to be Everett Song. He wanted me to be Mark Jarrett. And to grow into him. And what he is saying here, you know, the angel looks at him and says, a Savior's been born to you. You, shepherds, to you guys, man. You matter. You matter, shepherds. But you know what I'm going to say to you really means today to all of us? Because, folks, that's the exclamation point. The Savior has been born to us. To us. Luke chapter 2, 13 and 14. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom His favor rests. 
You know, to make it more amazing, God sends a whole angelic choir to sing and to praise Him, to praise God in front of these shepherds. Now I want to tell you, seeing an angel, number one, blow you away. The glory of the Lord, so bright, in a dark night, blow you away. Then all of a sudden, the sky was filled with angels singing only to the shepherds. Nobody else heard them. Nobody at the end heard them. Nobody traveling on the roads heard them. A huge angelic choir sang to them and sang those words. Glory to God in the highest on earth. Peace to those on whom His favor rests. I want to tell you, all of this in the viewing of the shepherds. And they were chosen to see all of this. Man, is that not an exc exclamation point? Is that not God saying to those shepherds, Dudes, this is something huge. Big time. Luke 2, 15. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. You know what? They looked at each other. And in 2018, let's go put eyes on this dude. Let's go put eyes on this baby. Let's go do it. And so they looked at each other and said, let's go. I don't think there was a hesitation. Now remember, they're on the mountain. And the other thing I want you to understand, there's, there's more than one inn in Bethlehem. There's more than one stable in Bethlehem. There's more than one manger in Bethlehem. So these guys came off that mountain and they had to search. They had to search. It's like that skip guy's video last week. He was hiding Jesus out of the nativity scene. And they had to search for Jesus. And when they found him, those three little kids were full of joy, jumping up and praising God, right? Remember when we were watching it? That's what happened. They searched the whole city. I'm going to lay that feet. There's more than one kid that's laying in some sort of somewhere. Don't, just don't think that they came off the mountain like a magnet went right to it. Because I don't think they did. I think they searched. And they found him. The angel gave them what to look for. One, newborn, wrapped in cloths. Two, laying in a manger. Not in a rented room, not in a house, not at the temple. Manger. Wrapped in cloths, they found him. Now, I'm not going to do what I usually do, give you an idea of how I think the shepherds walked in there, but I want to tell you something. Slow, easy, amazed. Those are the three words that I want you to hear me say. The shepherds went into that manger slow. They're invading private space. If you're Joseph and a stranger comes in, oh, wait a minute. An outcast, oh, wait a minute. A low light, oh, wait a minute. The lowest of lows starts to walk in to where your newborn child is. What are you going to do, men? What are you going to do if somebody come into your house? Oh, uh, y'all just going to sit there and let them just kill your kid. Right, way to go. Uh, I'll teach you uh, protection one-on-one. No, you're going to stand up and protect. You're going to move forward, okay? So I guarantee you they went in slow. You know they went in humble. I just, everything about this, they went in. Their joy was so big in their hearts of what they've just been told, they had to see it. And when they saw that little baby, you know what I find funny? <laughs> Every mother of a newborn, prettiest baby ever born. Prettiest baby ever born. I had a lady that kept telling me that. And I finally stopped her and I said, you know, no, my kids are. You know? I mean, your kids are, right? Your kids are the prettiest babies ever born. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Except Shannon, except for Brooklyn. Uh, yeah. But truly, baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. Now, think about it. Jesus and a baby. Look here. I don't know how much he weighed. Six pounds, two ounces, 19 and a half inches long. Jesus was his name. Perfect. Perfect. So 
Some babies come out, you know, they got their heads a little pointed, okay? Nothing. Some babies come out, they got little marks on their head. My baby, my second one came out and had papilloma on it, excess, excess skin. I'm standing there, baby comes out, and the doc goes like this on, on, on his head. Blood started running everywhere, man. It's where he scraped off some of the excess skin. It, it really was. Scared me to death. He said, don't worry about it. Just everything's cool. What I'm thinking, my baby, my baby bleeding. Do something. You know, come on. <laughs> but our babies are still beautiful. They're beautiful. But Jesus? Jesus? Jesus. Perfect. I don't know how long the shepherds were in there checking him out. Because if he's wrapped in cloths, swaddling clothes, you know how to swaddle a child and we're real tight to give them comfort and security. You all going to see it is, but he's still perfect. He's still perfect. So what they do? After seeing that child, they spread the news. They spread the, wait a minute, joyful news. Started telling everyone about the birth of Christ. They had seen the baby, it become true. Now today, pregnancies have a sex reveal party or moment. We had a little brother walk down with a t-shirt on, telling what the sex was, if you were here that day. Balloons are popped with cards in them. Arrows are shot and shot and shot and shot. <laughs> and the color of pink or blue is revealed. But the best one I've ever heard, true story, I'm serious, 2017, Dude was a hunter. And you can buy targets that explode. You really can. So, had the cameras all set up. This is a true story. And he had his, his uh, high power rifle. And boom! You see the video? It hits that target. It explodes. Blue everywhere. I mean to tell you because it's out in this field out west. And blue everywhere. And fire everywhere. Fire everywhere. And I'm serious. It burned over 73 square miles at a cost of over $8 million. He has been prosecuted and is in the process of paying the fine. Now, I don't know about you, I'd rather have shepherds saying, hey, the Messiah's been born. You know? The Messiahs, too, were on fire telling them about Christ, but not like that. And here we've got it. Different ways. Guess what? They went everywhere they could. They went into the inn. Low, outcast, nobody wanted to talk to them. Nobody wanted to be with them. They didn't care. They took the good news, the joyful news, to the people. And they went right there with them. Every time they told anyone and everyone who would listen, and I think we should be that same way today, on fire for Jesus. We need to start telling anyone and everyone that we come in contact with about the best news ever. Hmm, that might be a song you all want to hear soon. Jesus is the Savior of the world. The best news ever. The gospel. And this is a part of it. And then they praised God. They praised God, praised God, and praised God. Can you imagine? Again, we have to go on what we would think. After they told as many people as they could, and they said, well, we better go up and see if the sheep are still on the mountainside. And they went up there. Could you not believe the night that they would have? The joyful night? Man, I could just see it. You know, Billy, did, you re did we really see that? Yeah, we did, man. I saw that little baby. That's a Messiah. I saw, are you sure we saw? I mean, did we see the angel? Did we see that? Hey, big angel. It's all over them. I could go on and on and on. Because that's what it would have been. That's what it would have been. But that's not all. The joy doesn't stop there. I want to take you to Matthew chapter 2, 1 and 2 and 9 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. Now, after they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star that... They had seen when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Everybody say overjoyed. overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The joy continues. 
The Magi did not come to the manger. The Magi should not be in your nativity scene. The Magi, if you have a nativity scene with the Magi, take the nativity scene, take the, man, take the Magi, put them over. Because they're coming. This is two years later. Two years later. Two years later. Okay? And the wise men from the east had journeyed for two years to see the king of the Jews. And they just saw the star and followed it. And when they saw him, it was inside, come, coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. Coming to the house. And what were they? Overjoyed. Two years later. <coughs> now we have wise men in front of a huge caravan coming from the east who now come to see a two-year-old child. Two years old. Gannon's four, right? That's what we just celebrated. Two years old. Dude's walking around, talking. And they still presented him with joy in their hearts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They presented him this. Experiencing the joy of Jesus, in my humble opinion, starts during the Christ decision. This is where we grab it. The birth of the baby. And I truly believe that the joy of Jesus is contagious. The shepherds got it and went and told anyone who would listen. Mary and Joseph had it and they nurtured it in their hearts all the time of their life. The Magi, two years after the birth, got it and were overjoyed to the point that it was spilling out of their lives. The joy of Jesus is contagious today also. If you will move away from the commercialization of the season, this thing we call Christmas, which is really Christmas, guess what? You will find more joy. I'm not saying don't go buy stuff. That's not what I'm saying. As I hit my mic two times today. What I'm telling you to do is to make sure that you and your family put the commercialization of of Christmas over and enjoy and enjoy the experience of Jesus. Give the gifts. Buy me a gift. Give me a gift. I'll take it. <laughs> have the gifts. Have the food. Have everything else. But the foremost thing, experience His joy. Jesus said in the New Living Testament, Bible, John 15, 11. Listen to these words. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Do you have Jesus' joy? Do you have the love of God? If you do, keep your head up, move forward. God's with you, even during tough times. If you don't, today could be the best day.